MACD is one of the most popular technical analysis tools out there. I see it every day on people's charts. Here it is plotted along the bottom of this price graph. You know a lot of people use it, but not everybody knows how to use it most effectively. Let's begin by understanding what MACD is made up of. First of all, MACD of course is short for Moving Average Convergence Divergence. The most common formula that is by default used on almost all charting packages is the 12269 formula. The way it works is the MACD line is made up of the difference between the value of the 12 day and the 26 day exponential moving averages. Then a 9 day exponential moving average of the MACD is superimposed over the MACD as the signal line. MACD is a is what's known as a centered oscillator. In other words, the MACD fluctuates above and below a centering line, typically known as the zero line. These types of oscillators are good for identifying strength or weakness or direction of momentum behind a security's move. As we talked about in the formula, here are two exponential moving averages, the 12 and the 26, plotted right on a price chart. The faster moving average is the blue line, the 12, and the slower EMA is the red line, the 26. You see the 12 is at 40 approximately and the, and the, uh, and the 26 is at 38. So the difference between the two, the 40 minus the 38, gives us the MACD line. Here the MACD is plotted down below. The black line that I'm pointing at is the MACD line. You see it is a, at 2. That's the 40 minus the 38, so it's a positive 2. The MACD will fluctuate below and above the zero line. Typically, with centering oscillators, when the oscillator is above the zero line, we are in a bullish mode, and when the oscillator is below the zero line, we are in a bearish mode. This other line drawn here is the nine exponential moving average, the nine period EMA of the MACD of this black line itself. You know the uh, moving averages in and of themselves are uh, known to be lagging indicators and um, this chart uh, represents that pretty well. As you can see this move down uh, turned right about here and uh, it wasn't until about five, six, seven days later that the uh, moving averages actually signaled the change. Uh, a, a real lag there, in, and these are exponential moving averages. They're actually faster than a regular simple moving average. So simple moving averages would be slower yet. Uh, again, here's the change in direction, and then the crossover in the moving averages didn't happen until, you know, a week and a half later. Uh, one last time, the change in direction happens way down here, and then about six, seven days later, the uh, change in the crossover in the moving averages. Now MACD on the other hand uh, is, is much faster and uh, much more responsive to the change. Um, so as you can see the change over the crossover in MACD crossing the signal line happens here at this blue line and the red line shows how much more later uh, it was that the actual moving averages crossed. Here again the MACD crossovers and here is the actual moving average crossovers and then again finally um, the MACD crossing over and it wasn't until much later that, uh, that the uh, moving average actually, actually crossed over. Now remember how MACD is created. The MACD 
is the difference between the 12 day and the 26 day. So if MACD crosses above the zero line, this indicates that the 12 day has crossed above the 26 day. And uh, so as you see the MACD crossing the zero line here is really representative of where the true moving averages are, are doing their crossover. Uh, as MACD is rising, this is telling us that the gap between the 12 day and the 26 day is widening. Uh, therefore, indicating that uh, bullish momentum is increasing. As MACD crosses down below the zero line, we know that the 12 day has crossed down below the 26 day. And as it continues in its downward path, uh, we can um, understand and assume that the distance between the two moving averages is widening. Therefore, bearish sentiment is increasing. The momentum is, uh, is strengthening in the downward uh, uh, trend, as long as that uh, MACD line is, is in descent. I would like to point out that the histogram represents the difference between MACD and its 9-day EMA. If you notice that as the histogram uh, gets larger, this is, this is representing how wide the distance is between the MACD and the 9-day uh, e, uh, EMA. The histogram is positive when the MACD is above its 9-day EMA. So in this case, here's where the MACD is crossed over and it's above the 9-day. The histogram goes positive at that point. And the histogram goes negative when the MACD is below the 9-day EMA. Now another powerful tool in, in the MACD is the creation of divergences. Let me point some out. Here in March and April on this chart, you can see price was increasing by this resistance line drawn above the price but MACD, as you can see, was uh, falling. The peaks in the MACD were getting lower. This was kind of a heads up that, uh, that there was a change imminent. Here's another divergence where price is creating lower lows, shown by this sub descending support line, but the MACD was having higher lows. So again, here's a heads up, a divergence between MACD and action and price. MACD telling us, warning us that there was uh, the momentum of this down move was weakening and therefore a change was imminent. One more time, uh, another example of a divergence lower lows in price, higher lows in MACD, and then immediately followed by a MACD crossover and a change in direction. It's important to notice as well that MACD was making higher lows, but moving averages were making lower lows in this case. Here, the moving averages were making lower lows, but the MACD was making higher lows. 